Our love for video games aside, we must accept one simple truth, and that's that video game creators are ultimately trying to get as many real-world Pokebux, Robux, and Simoleons as they possibly can. This has naturally led to plenty of devilish money-making schemes. The following 10 entries asked gamers to shell out their hard-earned money for very bizarre reasons, offering up basic elements and pointless additions for an absurd price. I'm Jess from World Culture, and here are 10 insulting video game features you had to pay for. Number 10. Elvish Dialogue, Lord of the Rings Golem. Many Middle Earth fans felt insulted by 2022's The Rings of Power, but damn, who could have predicted an even bigger stain on Tolkien's legacy would rear its ugly head barely a year later? The jury is well and truly in for the Lord of the Rings Golem, which is, I don't know if that's a phrase, but I think we're going to make it one, as we know the game is an abysmal trash fire. But that doesn't stop the developers from trying to pop more gold into their golden dragon hoard of treasure and gold and stuff as they try to charge you for elvish dialogue. As can be expected from a Middle Earth game, the title is full of elves, and as such, the devs wanted to include the Sindarin language to help with immersion. However, to actually hear this dialogue, you need to either purchase the Precious Edition or buy the Sindarin VO pack after getting the base game. Datalik put out a statement on this, reported by Eurogamer, claiming they had to charge extra due to the cost of training the voice actors to learn the Sindarin language. But come on, nobody wants to pay extra for something that really should have been in the game in the first place. Number 9. New Game Plus – Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth Every gamer knows that feeling of emptiness that comes after finishing a big, great game. However, unlike the need to move on after a breakup, you can easily live in the past through the brilliance of New Game Plus. The ability to play through a game more than once, but with all the experience and items you gained in your first run, is something gamers cherish. Sadly, while this often comes as standard, the newest Yakuza game pops it behind a paywall that hits harder than a Kamaki Tiger Drop. In order to get your hands on Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth's New Game Plus mode, you have to purchase either the Deluxe or Ultimate Edition of the game. This would be insulting enough on its own, as New Game Plus is essentially an industry standard, but it's even worse given the series has featured the mode in standard game releases for years. Shelling out a AAA price tag for a feature that should always come standard in games and has always come standard in games feels a little bit icky, but maybe that's why it's called Infinite Wealth. Number 8. Faster Weapons – Dead Space The original Dead Space is a masterclass in sci-fi horror. It's a groundbreaking title with one awesome sequel, one terrible one, and an excellent remake. Still, the first game in the series came with a DLC pack that was undoubtedly questionable. The Speed Kills pack was a downloadable content edition that allowed you to upgrade the weapon speed of the line gun, force gun, and plasma cutter. It acted as a skin for the existing guns, coating them in black and yellow stripes and increasing their fire rate. Now, bumping up the speed of your guns did help to dispatch necromorphs quicker, but was there any need to fork out nearly three bucks for it? These speedy guns could have easily been included in the base game as unlockables, and they certainly didn't impact the gameplay enough that they felt like an essential purchase. Maybe it would have been better if the pack upgraded the gun's base stats, but they didn't. Sure, if you felt like harmonizing with Sonic in your Dead Space game and going real fast, maybe this one was for you, but otherwise it was a bit of a, why are we doing this? Number 7. DLC characters that should have been in the base game. Jump Force. Jump Force is a video game that could and should have been the next big thing in anime gaming. It was a massive fighter that pulled a collection of Shonen Jump magazine's best characters, including big names like Luffy, Naruto, and Goku. Sadly, while a lot of major figures made it in, there were plenty who were absent. Jump Force's roster was undoubtedly deep, but many properties like Black Clover, My Hero Academia, and Yu-Gi-Oh! started with just one character representing them. When characters did start dropping as DLC, it felt like an insult, as they should have been there in the first place. Characters like All Might from My Hero Academia and Seto Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh! were great examples. Imagine how you'd feel if a Mortal Kombat game came out and then forced you to pay for Katana. Not great, right? Well, that's how Jump Force players felt. Number 6. Horse Armor – The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion 
So for the uninitiated, let me initiate you because this is a real good one. Here is the drama that is Elder Scrolls' horse armor. 2006's Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion was a game worth every penny as it was deep, complex, and a genuinely fun RPG. However, one choice from Bethesda that quickly became a joke was the inclusion of downloadable armor for your horse. How much was it? Well, it cost you a neat $2.50. That might not seem like a lot to modern players, but you have to remember this is back when DLC was in its infancy, and so it absolutely rocked the industry and gamers as a whole. Let's not forget Oblivion was single player, not online, meaning the only person seeing this armor would be you, the NPCs, and the horse. So what was the point in buying it? Number five, Grounded Mode, The Last of Us. Finding anything negative on the internet about the release of the original The Last of Us is about as easy as finding a faithful video game movie adaptation. Still, one thing you can criticize is the downloadable grounded mode difficulty. Now on the surface, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this mode. In fact, the mode itself is awesome. This version of the game upped the survival aspects by disabling the HUD, making resources rarer than an opinionless Star Wars fan, tripling enemy damage, and more. However, the problem with this difficulty setting is that you had to pay extra for it. Grounded Mode was part of the game's last DLC bundle, which offered up the epic challenge alongside new skills, weapons, and faction maps. You could also purchase Grounded Mode as a standalone for $4.99. Of course, while the mode was solid, it still felt insulting to pay to increase the game's difficulty, especially when challenge modes often come with the base game. It even came standard with the release of The Last of Us Remastered, which kind of proves they probably should have just put it in there for us to begin with. Number four, seeing your frame data, Tekken 7. You can always expect a lot from fighting game DLC. For example, plenty of franchises like Mortal Kombat, Injustice, and Soul Calibur have delighted gamers by bringing pop culture figures into their rosters. Hell Street Fighter V even rebuilt itself into a decent game by using downloadable content, but just like Jump Force, it doesn't always work out. You wouldn't be wrong in expecting high quality DLC from a legendary series like Tekken, which is why players were so frustrated when the seventh mainline installment offered a unique additional feature in the third season pass. What was this feature? Well, it was a frame data display that allowed you to analyze attacks, blocks, and advantages by going through your frame data. This was met with overwhelming criticism from the player base, who saw it as a cheap attempt to squeeze more cash out of players with the promise of a slight technical advantage. Sure, it was only $4, but again, it's the principle of the matter. Gamers shouldn't have to open their wallets to get something as basic as frame data. Number three, additional save slots, Metal Gear Survive. Gaming has changed so much over the years, yet one thing that's remained constant is the use of save slots. It's such a basic function that any game that doesn't use them, you can tell it's a specific design choice. So when Konami decided they would charge you if you wanted to use them, we can only assume they were cackling maniacally. The infamous Metal Gear Survive had the word soulless cash grab all but printed on the front. It was the first MGS game to release after Hideo Kojima's infamous split from the company and was dead on arrival thanks to its terrible gameplay, plot, and microtransactions. Naturally, the worst of these paywalls came if you were looking for more than one save slot. If you wanted to increase the limited number of saves, you needed to grab 10 bucks, exchange that for SV, which is the in-game currency, and then get yourself another slot. How anyone could see this as anything but pure greed and exploitation is beyond reason. What's next? A game's gonna start charging for subtitles or soundtracks or story? Uh, hang on, let's keep to that subject for a minute. Number two, story missions, Overwatch 2. Oh boy, Overwatch 2, the sequel that Blizzard absolutely screwed the pooch on every step of the way. This game drew the ire of the whole industry thanks to its constant run of bad choices, like cutting the highly anticipated hero PvE mode. However, one of the most egregious examples was charging extra for story missions. Fans have been waiting for these missions since the game's launch, with many shocked they weren't there already. Sadly, when they did drop, it was nothing short of devastating, as there were only three threadbare missions, and you had to spend 15 bucks to play them. The Resistance, Liberation, and Ironclad missions dropped as part of Season 6, and did nothing to drum up enthusiasm from the player base, with low player counts on all of them. 
It's safe to say that multiplayer games without story modes are definitely becoming more commonplace and popular. I mean, just look at Helldivers 2. But promising a bunch of story missions and then not including them and then charging for them when you do include them, not the best move. Number one, Looking Glass Ocular Implant, EVE Online. Gamers nowadays are more than used to paying to add extra details to their online characters. It makes sense as you want to stand out when you're roaming a multiplayer world, right? But this monocle damn near broke players when they found out how much it cost. EVE Online is an epic space MMORPG that generates a vast and complex universe for you to play around in. As such, it comes with plenty of cosmetic options for those seeking to delve deep into the role-playing, with the Looking Glass Ocular Implant being one of the most infamous, as it costs, and wait for it, I hope you are sitting down, 60 freaking dollars. Naturally, if you're going to spend such a whopping amount on your video game passion, which by the way could get you a double A if not triple A release, you're going to want to at least stand out. This small, barely even noticeable monocle is far from meeting that standard as it doesn't even impact the gameplay and makes precious little impact aesthetically. If you've got the money to waste on something like this, then good for you, but for everyone else, it'll just be a joke.